The dragon went berserk and rushed straight for the ringmaster, who held a bit of fish in his hands. Today's story takes us to the great traveling circus, Spark Hanford. With hundreds of people coming to see the show every weekend, the circus was known for its extravagant shows, feats of daring displays, and a wild array of exotic animals, which were used to stun, amaze, and bring excitement to the crowds who came to watch. Marvin Sloan was a professional ring worker who had worked with the animals for his entire life. He had taken over from his brother and was now in charge of handling and sometimes presenting the animals to the crowds for their amusement and pleasure. However, the one thing he did not prepare for was a starved Komodo dragon which was bent on feeding one way or another. The preparation for the day's events went on as planned, with the venue for the circus picked several weeks in advance. The rigs had been set up, and outside, some smaller shops had popped up, already selling to some of the workers and early visitors looking to get a look behind the scene. Marvin made sure that the animals were offloaded from the trailers, ensuring that they were handled with care. There was a bear, three different snakes, a tiger, a Komodo dragon, and the biggest of all, which was not there yet, was their African elephant. The creatures were taken into one of the tents set aside for them, and Marvin called in one of the animal experts to check on them. The animals were looked at one final time before they were all given the thumbs up. All he had to do was feed them the night before, and the creatures would be fine for the next day. Marvin got to work getting meat for the animals. However, when he got to the tiger, the grumpy creature reached out of its cage and pulled the food crate closer. Marvin did not see this happen, but by the time he turned around, the large cat had taken all of the meat which was meant for it and the Komodo, and was now munching away at what was left. Angry at the tiger, he turned away and pulled out his foam, looking to make another order for more meat. But they were closed till the next week, and the Komodo would have to go on without food until the Monday after the performance. He would be able to get it some fish from the local market, but nothing which would be enough to satisfy the creature. One look at the dragon told him not to worry. It sat in its cage, unmoving, with its eyes staring right at him. Its tongue darted out of its jaws quickly as it tasted the air. Marvin reached in and patted its head, as the creature had gotten used to him and did not attack him. In the wild, they were known for going weeks without a meal, so a day without eating properly would probably be fine with the Komodo. By the next day, the show began and the animals were prepped to attack. Marvin dressed up appropriately and went out to the crowd, taking a basket with the King Cobra inside of it. The creature had been defanged, so it made it safe for him to interact with. However, he had a fake pair of fangs which he palmed in his gloves as he went out for the performance. He forced the jaw of the creature open and showed the amused crowd the fake fangs to all before he began dancing back and forth with the snake in a practice fashion, agitating the creature to strike. It lunged at him and he would jump out of the way just in time. It would attack again and he would dodge it. The crowd knew how quickly he would die if he was bitten by the creature, so the sight made them hold their breaths, taking their time to pull them in. Finally, the snake hit its mark, drawing a hushed gasp from the crowd as they stared at the snake, clamping down hard on the arm of the man. But Marvin turned around to show that he had the snake in his hand, and told the lie that he had caught the creature midair before it could bite him. With that done, another performer went out with the tiger, a man with a chair and a whip, showing the crowd just how much control he had over the tiger. Meanwhile, Marvin cooled off from the snake experience. He had done it a number of times before, but it was still harrowing, going face to face with a snake. All of the other creatures seemed tameable, but the cobra made him wonder what it would do to him if it actually had teeth. While he rested, one of the men backstage rushed up to him with news which he did not expect to hear. Apparently, there was an issue with moving the elephant, 
and the creature could not make it to the circus, and so it would not be available for the closing act of the night. They would need something which would replace the performance, and the only alternative they had was the Komodo dragon. Look, Jumbo isn't coming, and we need to put on a show. You're the only person who can actually do the routine with the dragon right now, so we need you out there, okay? said the showman. Marvin argued, trying to explain that he did not have time to prepare and the dragon would be restless, but the man didn't listen. With the show itself taking priority, Marvin was forced to head out with the Komodo, pushing the creature as it was chained to a small board and bring it to the center of the circus ring. The crowd was silenced by the sight of the animal, as a lot of them had never seen one in real life before and were truly astonished. After the ringmaster introduced the powerful creature, Marvin began the routine, dangling a piece of fish over the head of the dragon. The hungry creature got up on its hind legs and snapped viciously at the fish, taking a bite and swallowing it instantly. Marvin was a little shocked by the ferocity of the display, as he had trained the dragon to be a lot gentler, but then he thought nothing of it. It was just an accident on the side of the creature. However, the moment he took it off the chains, the dragon went berserk and rushed straight for the ringmaster, who held a bit of fish in his hands. The creature slammed into him from behind, and the man fell over, not sure of what had hit him. But by the time he could react, the dragon had his entire fist down his throat, and its sharp teeth and powerful jaws cutting and slicing through his flesh. Marvin rushed at the creature quickly, looking to pull it away from the ringmaster, but the dragon reacted first, swiping its tail at Marvin's legs and knocking him over to the ground as it attacked the man. Marvin got to his knees and dove on the creature from behind, using his hands to pry open the mouth of the creature. Once there was enough space, the ringmaster pulled his fist free and shimmied away from the creature. The crowd watched in silent horror, transfixed at the spectacle which they were witnessing. The dragon shoved Marvin off by shaking its body violently, and he lost his grip. It took off, rushing right back at the ringmaster and taking a large bite of his stomach. The man let out a deep, guttural scream, which drew the first cries from the crowd, resulting in a panic as people rushed to leave the tent. It took the help of two other men to finally get the dragon off the ringmaster and back in its chains and muzzle. By the time the man was safe, he had lost so much blood that the on-site medic had to get him lifted to the nearest hospital by a helicopter. The man had survived the attack, but would lose a finger and would need several stitches to his stomach. That day would be a lesson for Marvin Sloan, one which he would carry into retirement. You can never be fully prepared for nature.